He was in there somewhere. In that long slab of night that was too black to see through. Somewhere in there. I put my back against the wall and slid into it. Strike a match. I want to see your face when it happens to you. Try me. <laughs> no, Marshal. You shoot first. You'll miss. You know that, Marshal. But I won't. Because your gun flash will tell me where you are. Real clever. And that was clever what you did back at the White Buffalo. Honest engine? Now tell me about it. You and your friend. That was Harold, huh? A giggler with a talent for pistol whipping. Tell me some more about it. You throw down a hundred dollar bill with a blue chip underneath it after the ball drops. You get yourself thrown out. Harold collects 35 to 1. Did Harold do that? Oh, Harold. Did you do that? <laughs> and there he was. of the violence that moved westward with young America. The story of one man who moved with it, Mark Dillon, United States Marshal. Oh, a man there lives on the western plains with a ton of fight and an ounce of brain who herds the cows as he robs the train and goes by the name of Cowboy. He was part of it. A singing saddle bum, a cowboy, a drifter. They all drifted here to Dodge City one time or another. It's the end of the track and the start of the wilderness. The dumping ground of odds and ends, beginnings, leftovers. It's a place to stop and take the kind of pleasure you need. It's a place to pass through. Sometimes it's a place to die. My part of it was a sun charred shack rent paid by the United States government and a marshal's badge furnished free. I was at the window watching the heat plump itself with Kansas dust and roll in towards the town when the door opened. Your name, Dylan? You the United States Marshal? She was about 50. Hat, poke bonnet, dress, gingham, shoes, beaded Indian moccasin. I heard about you in Gulgi. They said there was a steady marshal here. Been living for six months running. They've been lying to you. Four months. They say you can break a man's heart at 50 yards. They say you and your guns already done that. What's on your mind? I want you to saddle up and get down to Gaujai. Why? My husband. My husband owns the White Buffalo. Roulette, music, drinks. They say the roulette wheel's crooked. Now look, ma'am. Half the roulette wheels in the West are probably crooked. Maybe. But in Gaujai, they kill a man for running a crooked wheel. Well, look, ma'am, I Abigail don't... Abigail Contrarius, that's my name. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Contrarius, you don't need a marshal. You need an honest husband. That wheel's no more crooked than you are. Leastwise, from all I hear about you. Was I wouldn't take none of the money's won from it. Oh, sure. Don't show me, Marshal. The money don't just mean money to me. It means books for Indian kids and writing stuff, slates and all. Oh, missionary. Huh. Me, with a gambler and a philanderer and a toper for a husband. I teach Indian kids, that's all. Teach them to behave and a little learning, that's all. That's good work, ma'am. These towns could use more people like you. Never mind that. If I don't get help, those kids will go back to their wild ways and I'll have a dead husband. You coming? Do I have to ride that mule some more? Ride it back to Gaujai. I'll be along. Make it soon, Marshal. There'll be a convulsion down there if you don't. It was night when the town of Gaujai came out of the wilderness and beckoned to me like a painted skinny hag. If Dodge City had a tougher sister, this was it. I rode up to the white buffalo and started to tie my horse to a hitching post whittled to the shape of a Pawnee girl when... Suddenly, the gun in my back told me I wasn't alone. You won't like it here, Marshal. Pretty as it is, you won't like it. No? No, and uh, don't turn around, Marshal. I'm shy and I'm modest and I embarrass easy. Isn't that so, Harold? <laughs> you see, Harold thinks it's so. Harold had his tongue clipped. Apaches. Maybe it was too long. Oh, now, that's not a genteel thing to say to Harold Marshall. He takes offense. I'm new here. Back in Dodge City, the etiquette's a little more formal. Then go back to Dodge. We're very happy here in Gaujai, like little birds. You could spoil it. I was invited. Special invitation. Well, the party's over. Now, Harold, now! <laughs> 
Something lashed out across my skull. A bead of glass splintered my brain. From far, far away, I heard some words. Like I said, Marshal, you won't like it in Gaudai. I wanted to kill him, but I couldn't. I didn't know who he was. I hadn't seen his face. But I knew I'd never forget that voice and that crazy giggle. When I opened my eyes, I was in Gaujai's dirt. I picked myself up, waited till the town stopped its dizzy dance. On its third time round, I spotted a horse trough. Duck my head and get rid of the blood on my face. I finally pushed my bones through the swinging doors of the white buffalo. It was the usual kind of place, like Mrs. Conquerie said. Roulette music, drinks. I got halfway across the floor toward the bar, then I saw her and heard her. Slender, hair molded black, and something profane and exquisite distilled into her features. She looked at me, and when she spoke, it was as if she hadn't quit singing. Buenas noches, chico. Oh, a marshal. A marshal with a new scar and a muddy badge. <laughs> you buy a drink, huh, chico? Here's a buck. Buy yourself an egg. Where can I find the owner? Over there by the poker table. The goatee and pompadour. Thanks. Hasta la vista, Marshal. Yeah, I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Your name, Contuarius? See. Si. Oh, the Marshal from Dodge City. Oh, you have the look of a large headache, senor. Yeah, someone else besides you and your wife was expecting me. Oh, muy mal, bad. Yeah, it wasn't good. So I see. But I'm glad you have come, senor Marshal. Look around. You see my place? The white buffalo, sole proprietor and owner, me, Rafael Ramon Jose Contuarias. Magnificent establishment, no? Mm-hmm. Looks like your magnificent establishment takes plenty. For weeks now, I am losing money on the roulette wheel. Still, people say it is crooked. Oh? Uh -huh. Someone is swindling me, senor. This someone I swear I will kill, dead, unless you find him for me first. That is why my wife comes to you, asks you to come to Gauja. She had a little difference. She's afraid this someone might kill you first. Oh, uh, see, that might happen. But not so long as he can swindle me. Why kill the chicken with the golden egg, senor? Mm -hmm. Well, let's have a look at this wheel of yours. Ah, see. Si. Follow me. Well, Brad, number Who's your spinner? Greg Hagen, base croupier in the territory. Uh huh. Suppose you let me look around myself. As you wish, senor. You find that someone who is swindling my wheel. See? I'll give it a try, Mr. Contuarius. Bueno. Contuarius left me alone. I watched the table for a while. Nothing happened. Wheel didn't look crooked, and if it was being swindled, it was done clever. Finally, I moved around near the croupier. Hagen. Yeah? See you a minute. What for? Oh, Marshal. Yeah. Bill, take over for a minute. Sure. Okay, Marshal. What can I do for you? This joint legitimate? Why ask me, Quant Quantuarius? I know, sole proprietor and owner. Rumor has it the wheel's rigged, is it? Suppose it is. Well, then, I could win. You could win, too. Maybe 25% of what I win, and Contuarius wouldn't know. Keep talking. We both got to live 50%. Now get this. Contuarius is my friend. Sorry, I made a mistake. No hard feelings? Plenty hard feelings. I think I like it better back at the table. Look around yourself. Make up your own mind about the wheel. <laughs> So I did. Mostly I hung around the roulette table. As far as I could see, the wheel was given the house and the customers an even break. Just about the time I started to walk away, two new players came up to the crowded table. One pasty face, handsome, and a weak chin sort of way. The other, a big silent hulk of a man with a drooping lower lip. They didn't seem to be together or even know each other. On the next spin, the ball fell into 29. Bounced out, rolled around 13. Finally, settled in double O. Just as it did, Pastyface reached out and put a hundred-dollar bill on double O. Greg Hagen, the croupier, looked up and spoke soft but fast. Sorry, mister, you placed your bet after the ball settled. The house can't accept it. I had that hundred dollars down before you started to spin. Pay me off. Sorry, mister, the house says you take back your money. 
Can't worry. Pay me, brother, before I make brush out of this joint, and you first. Any trouble, Greg? Yeah, this man placed a bet after the ball dropped. Ah, he's crazy. I had to bet down it plenty of time. So sorry, senor. The croupier is always right. Take your bill from the table. And if you please, get out. He did. Fast. Too fast. As he went, I started to remember his voice. I'd heard it before. It was the voice behind my back when I first hit town. And all of a sudden, it made sense, and I knew I'd found out one way the Spaniard was getting rooked. Pasty face on the Hulk for a team. When Pasty face picked up the bill, there was a blue chip under it, on double O, and the house paid off to the Hulk. All according to Hoyle, except for one thing. The Hulk hadn't placed any bets with a good stunt. There had to be more to it than that, so I gave Contuarius a nod and followed Pasty face as he left. I got out of the casino just in time to see him disappear around a corner. I took it easy, polite and easy. And a bullet nubbed the dust at my feet. I ducked into the shadows and whipped out my guns. A flash had come from a narrow passageway between two buildings. I'm in this alley, Marshal. Come on in and get me. Wait right there, kid. I'm waiting. He was in there somewhere, in that long slab of night that was too black to see through. Somewhere in there. I put my back against the wall and slid out. Strike a match. I want to see your face when it happens to you. Try me. <laughs> no, Marshal. You shoot first. You'll miss. You know that, Marshal. But I won't. Because your gun flash will tell me where you are. Real clever. And that was clever what you did back at the White Buffalo. Honest engine? Now tell me about it. You and your friend. That was Harold, huh? That giggler with a talent for pistol whipping. Tell me some more about it. You throw down a hundred dollar bill with a blue chip underneath it after the ball drops. You get yourself thrown out. Harold collects 35 to 1. Did Harold do that? Oh, Harold. Did you do that? <laughs> and there he was, framed in the entrance of the alley. I was caught between them, pasty face and a mute called Harold. The big guns in Harold's hands turned over and over. His face held all the evil in the world. You all right, Harold? Take him! <laughs> he was shooting waist high along the wall. And he was getting close. There was only one thing to do. And I couldn't miss. You got Harold, Marshal, but you made a mistake. Your gun flash gave you away. When I opened my eyes, I was in a place I'd never been before. Kind of cottonwood clearing. I eased the wound in my shoulder, and from across a smoldering campfire, I saw her. The girl from the white buffalo. A morning sun lighted up the features of a man at her feet. It was Senor Rafael Ramon Jose Contuarius. And the bullet hole in the middle of his forehead gave him an extra flourish. Now it was Senor Rafael Ramon Jose Contuarius deceased. And the pretty senorita was singing a love song. Back to Gunsmoke in just a moment. Combining modern detective methods with secrets of the mysterious East, the Green Llama offers CBS listeners a new thrill now on Sundays. Once he has heard of a crime or an injustice, Jethro Dumont, a wealthy young American just returned from ten years in Tibet, brings into play his quick wit and knowledge of illusion to thwart the evildoers. Join him Sunday as he continues his fight against crime on this side of the Pacific, wearing green, the color of Tibetan justice, aided by Tulku, his trusted lieutenant. The Green Llama is a feature presentation of most of these same CBS stations. Now back to Mark Dillon, United States Marshal and Gunsmoke. You have slept long, Chico, without ring. How do you know there were no dreams? Because I saw death give you a little piece of himself. And then right away on a black pony. Yeah, I'm lucky. Who are you? How'd you get here? 
They call me Tamar. I brought you here. The wagon over there in the burrow. You are muy lucky, Chico. The bullet was for your heart, but it stands still from your shoulder. It was not your time to die. But it was Contuary's time, huh? Perhaps his grave has been empty too long. And you knew him well? See, si. I knew him. Well enough to kill him. I did not kill him. Senor Contuarius was my protector. What did he protect you from? Himself? I like your mouth better when it is gentle, Chico. And who did kill him? <laughs> How would I know? He was there like that when we arrived. Why'd you bring me here? I like you, Chico. That's why I tell you. If you leave, go back to Dodge City. If you die, die in Dodge City. It is not good here for either one. Why didn't Pasty Face finish the job? Right after you were wounded, I came along. I... I persuaded him you were dead. He persuades easy, huh? He persuades easy. For Tamar. The shots were heard. People came. Senor Drew does not like attention. Drew? Ah, his name's Drew. But why here? What'd you bring me here for? I thought Conquarius could help you. After all, he was your friend. How'd you know that? I saw you talking together in the white buffalo. But tonight, out of the darkness, death found Conquarius. Conquarius! Conquarius! Where is he? Where is he? Answer me, woman, or I'll horsewhip you within an inch of your life. There, senora. Hello, Marshal. Enjoying yourself? Get up, Contuarius, get up. He's dead, man. He shouldn't be lying there on the cold ground. I'll lift him into the cart. I will help you, senora. If you so much as touch him, I'll kill you. Come along. Contuarius. Give me that blanket, Marshal. You won't need it. Sure. Here, ma'am. You're pretty strong to lift him by yourself. I've done it before. You're hurt, Marshal. I'll be all right. You can come too if you want to, Marshal. I'll take you back to town. Yes, ma'am. I didn't think she'd make it, but she did. Somewhere on that long wagon ride back to town, she squeezed a tear onto her cheek. Just one tear, but for Mrs. Contuarius, it was a major emotion. The sun was doing its best to char the wood frame buildings when we hit Gauja. All right, Marshal. Get out of the wagon. Why bring me back to Gauja? Just so I could pick my own gutter? That door. That shack door right over there. Try it. Get up. Oh, come on, Dylan. All you have to do is lift your arm and knock on the door. Yeah. Well, Marshal. What's the offer this time? A hundred and fifty percent? Hey, you're hurt. Come on in. Thanks. Who sent you here? Mrs. Contuarius. Oh. I better cut away that shirt. Why'd she send me here, Greg? Not neat, Marshal. Not neat at all. Why here, Greg? You a duck? Lie still. I'll get some things. You haven't answered my question. I do things with my hands, Marshal. Spin roulette wheels and extract bullets between spins. You a doc? Yeah, I'm a doc. Was. Had a shingle. Shiny one. And they said I couldn't have it anymore. They had a word for it. Malpractice. They said I did something. What are you looking at? That roulette wheel on the table over there. What's the matter, Greg? Don't you get enough practice at the white buffalo? You want this wound fixed or not? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Say, Greg. Yeah? I once heard about a croupier clever enough to spin a wheel and drop a ball into any slot he wanted. Hit it about once out of five times. Not bad. Once in four is better. What about it? I could mention it to Mrs. Contuarius. Round up you and Drew and go back to Dodge City. Drew? Pasty face guy, the guy who pulled the fast trick with the chip and the hundred dollar bill last night. I didn't know him. I refused the bet, didn't I? Yeah, that's what doesn't fit. I'd stop worrying about it if I were you, Marshal. I could keep this wound open and let it bleed. On the other hand, you could take the bullet out. Yeah, I could do that. And I'd owe you something. 
I wouldn't have to remember you to Mrs. Contuarius. It's like this, Marshal. First, I just wanted to tame the wheel. Then it got out of hand. Tamar have anything to do with it getting out of hand? What do you know about... I'm ready to take the bullet out, Marshal. You're going to keep what you know to yourself? Take the bullet out. I'll bite my lip. Yeah, do that, Marshal. It's a nice pose. I bit my lip, but all I got was pain in my mouth. I didn't need that. There was enough pain. It was a pain that was painted in red, and it couldn't decide whether it was a flame or an icicle. When I woke up, Greg was talking to someone. It didn't take long to recognize the voice. You should have let him die, Chico. You will only cause trouble. He's got nothing on me. Only trouble I got is you. Every man in town. You couldn't even leave the marshal alone. Caramia, you're crazy. I found the marshal in the cottonwood clearing, like I told you. He was there when I came. Yeah. Keeping your little rendezvous with Contuarius. I warned you, Tamar. I told you if I ever caught you with Contuarius again, I'd kill him, and I did. I'm sorry I heard you say that, Greg. Don't be sorry. Just leave town. I could have let you die, Marshal. I'm going to take you, Greg. But first, I'm going to give you some advice. Yeah? Get rid of Tamar. One of her stories is bad. Either the one she told you or the one she told me. Don't listen to him, Chico. She told me she brought me to the cottonwood clearing. Persuaded Drew that I was dead. If that's true, then it follows that Drew's cutting your time the same as Contuarius was. You can't kill everybody Tamar takes up with. The marshal talking through his wound, Tamar? He's delirious. He's lying, Greg. I found him in the clearing, as I told you. Well, Greg, who do you believe? Me or Tamar? Get out, Marshal. Get out and leave town. Can't, Greg. Not yet. Gotta take you. Also, there's a personal matter to attend to. I could have let you die, Marshal. Remember? Yeah. I'll testify at your trial. Kill him, Greg. Kill him now. Shut up. <clears throat> you know, Tamar, you got too many friends. It's a lie. Everything he says is a lie. Maybe. We'll stay one more night in Gaojai. Just one more night. That's all we'll need. No good, Greg. I'll have to take you. With your shooting arm in a sling? I don't think so. I'll gamble on it, Greg. Want odds? I got up and left Greg's shack. He didn't try to stop me. One thing about Greg, he wasn't afraid of me or anybody else. I went back to the White Buffalo and waited. About an hour later, Mrs. Contuarius drove up. She was wearing black. She'd just come from her husband's funeral. Lend me your good arm, Marshal. I don't want to rip this dress. Yes, ma'am. There you are. Was it a nice funeral, ma'am? Yes, Marshal. The kids behaved real nice. You've done a good job on them, ma'am. Thanks. Come in and have a drink, Marshal. You look peaked. I followed her into the casino. In an hour, I began to fill up. I hid myself behind the stairs where I had a clear view of the roulette table and waited. About eight, Tamar walked through the door. Tamar in a dress of red. Tamar buckled with silver. She strolled over to the table and put some chips on the black as Greg spun. There was no sign of recognition between them. Seven black. Seven pays. Black pays. Place your bets. On the next spin, Tamar won again. Then she lost. She doubled her bets and won more times than she lost. After a while, she stopped playing colors and switched to single numbers, 35 to 1. She kept on winning, but one out of four, like Greg said. In an hour, there was roughly $20,000 stacked in front of her. Just before she bet number 13, I saw Greg fold his thumb under his palm and rub the side of his face. 13 black, 13 pays, black pays. Lucky. You're very lucky tonight, Tamar. Tonight, senora? <laughs> but I'm always lucky at your table, no? Not as lucky as tonight. Sorry, man, this is a private table from now on. You can all move to the second wheel right over there. Private table, senora? Yes. Yeah. Just you and this gentleman. The man Abigail thumbed at over her shoulder was Mr. Drew in person. I put my good hand on my gun and prepared to finish my unfinished business. And I decided to wait for the piece to play itself out. I didn't know what Mrs. Contuarius had in mind, but this show was too good to spoil. Tamar, Greg, and Drew. I don't know. This is my last spin. That's all right, Tamar. All Mr. Drew wants is just one spin. 
Right, Mr. Drew? Yeah. Just one spin with the little lady. But I... Mr. Drew, huh? Yeah. But I do not feel like betting. We'll him. spin once more. Bueno. All of my chips on number one. Hmm. Number one, huh? Hey. Yeah, that's a good number. Number one. I'll take 10,000 in gold on number one. Three red. Three pays. Red pays. Why, you double... No, no! no! Greg didn't have a chance. The knife he tried to draw was hammered back by the bullets that tore through his hand and across his chest. Suddenly his face changed. He looked young and hurt. And ashamed of the blood that he couldn't hold back. It'll make me happy if no one tries to follow us. Let's go, tomorrow. He held his guns like they were dogs on a leash that could snap easy. He waited for Tamar to scoop up the money. Then they backed out of the casino. You let him get away, Marshal! I don't think so, ma'am. He knows I'll come and get him. He'll be waiting for me. He'll be wanting to finish me off if he can. And I'm going to give him his chance. I figured there was only one place to look. And there they were. Resting easy in the cottonwood clearing. <laughs> I knew you'd have to come after me, Marshal. <laughs> You're funnier than an actor. I saw one once and died. <laughs> You're funnier. <laughs> Maybe you laugh too easy, Drew. Like you kill too easy. A Marshal with a gun arm and a sling chasing a killer. <laughs> Go away, Marshal. Go away while there's still time. I got nothing but time. I'll wait. You're wrong, Marshal. You've got no time at all. Yeah? Chico. Chico. This I do not believe. It is impossible that someone could shoot faster than Senor Drew. Not with your left hand. Oh, Chico, you are so very quick with your gun. I like that about a man. Take it easy, Tamar. Come on. Let's go. Go? Not now, Marshal. There's time. Sit here. Sit here next to Tamar. Like this? Oh, see. You know what I think? Chico, Chico, don't talk now. I think he had a great thing with Greg. He could put that ball on any number you bet on. Only that wasn't enough for you. But it doesn't matter now, darling. You thought you could double your profits by throwing in with Drew. Maybe you were going to double cross him, too. I don't know. Don't worry about it, Chico. The money is yours, too. It belongs to Mrs. Contuarius. That's who's going to get it. What? What are you talking about? Take your choice. Come back with me to the jail in Gaujai, or I'll turn you over to Mrs. Contuarius. I don't think she could stand having you alive. You! Come on. This is the first time I've ever held a gun on a woman. Chico, surely, surely you are playing with me. You're an accessory to murder, Tamar. We go away together. You and I. Mako, New Orleans. Listen to me, Chico. You and I. Let's go, Tamar. Listen. Listen to me. There's plenty of money. Yours and mine. Listen to me. Sleep. She put her arms around my neck and her lips close to my ear. And for a long time, for a long, long time, first in English and in Spanish, then in Cherokee, then in a language I couldn't recognize, she whispered at me every foul name in the book. She was talented. She didn't repeat herself once. Tamar didn't understand that a marshal had a job to do, and that the job got done. On the way back to Dodge, I came across a cottonwood clearing I'd never noticed before. I rode down into it. A small animal scurried off a log and lost itself in the shadows. And I was alone. And for a time after that, for a long time after that, I thought about Tamar. He'd given her her guitar, but I knew she wouldn't be singing much longer. The rest of the way home, the country was dust. Got inside of my mouth, and it stayed there. 